I'm Yvette Chirubi. I work at the University of Miami as an archives technician. Today I will be discussing the University of Miami Library's digital collections, which you can access following the digitalcollections.library.miami.edu slash digital URL. So this is our digital collections landing page. Um, our mission, which you can access in the About page, discusses that the UM Digital Collection aims to provide online access to primary source materials to support teaching, learning, and research at the university and worldwide. The crux of their mission centers around creating a robust digital collection featuring rare and unique objects from our various departments and libraries, which includes the University Archives, the Cuban Heritage Collection, Special Collections, the Weeks Music Library, the Residential Marine Library, the Calder Medical Library, and the Architecture Research Center. The About page also encourages community engagement through user comments and tagging in order to enrich the material through user interaction. So our primary community that we service are the UM students, faculty, and staff, but we also seek to provide access to researchers on a statewide and global scale. So our collections are open to the public. You don't need a cane ID or any UM. You don't have to be a part of UM to access any of these materials. You can just go to the site and you will be able to see everything. Our stakeholders are the Digital Strategies Department within UM. They work in the main university library and are under the leadership of the Associate Dean who is responsible for managing, curating, and preserving the digital collections online. Our digital library is also funded through the university as well as grants. So grants like the NHPRC grant and CLEAR grant help to fund the digitization of large collections. So in particular, we have the Pan American World Airways records, which you can see up here. This collection was funded through the CLEAR grant, which had a lot of robust boxes and materials over 60 linear feet that were outsourced and digitized and these were mostly brochures, directories, periodicals, and timetables. So the digital libraries operates with the aforementioned departments and libraries as well as a bunch of partner institutions which you can find under other digital initiatives. It lists out all the periodicals, um, projects, other websites and archives that we've partnered with and contributed to. Our digital library contains items such as periodicals, yearbooks, maps, manuscripts, photographs, ephemera such as pamphlets, brochures and flyers, menus, zines, monographs, postcards, slides, architectural plans, videos, and oral histories. So you can see examples of this on the landing page. If you go to the Cuban Heritage Collection you can see a wide range of things like posters, view books, theater materials, and to browse our digital collections. We have the landing page that separates everything into department as well as the individual libraries. And within each department or library, you have the different archival collections that you can access. Um, here we have an example of oral histories. So you would click on the individual collection and you'd get this nice little blurb about what's inside. And then you can browse and view the different oral histories, both the audio and video files, as well as the transcripts of the interviews. So the digital strategies team is the one that mainly adds collections to the site. Other individual departments and libraries can put in requests for items, but the onus of who gets to do the final decision that's solely the digital strategies department. 
um, they will put out call outs routinely where the different departments and libraries can submit collections that they believe would fall under high demand and basically based on whether or not they fall inside or outside of copyright and whether or not there's a demonstrated need for the material at least from a research capacity that's how the digital strategy ranks what gets to be where inside the digital queue and what is basically going to be digitized next so Every individual item in the collection requires a lot of metadata to describe the material. So you can see right here in one of these letters, you have the image up here as well as all this metadata. Um, this is created through Content DM through OCLC using their metadata schema which has been mapped from Dublin Core and it has a lot of these elements filled out so for every single item within the digital collection somebody has to go in and fill all this out and every item has its own unique digital ID to separate it from other items and it usually includes the collection number inside our access policy indicates that everything is open access so anyone can come in download and view these collections um, we also have a very interactive menu based navigation system for users and if you want to see the image you can manipulate it by augmenting it you can turn it. You can even download it and print the item. And there, all right, if you want to know more about the collections, you can go into the about page and it lists the contact information for the different heads of the department that you can contact with research questions or if you want to come in and view the collections or if you want to use and request collections for any reproduction. You can also find information on copyright use fee schedules right here under using our collections. There's the image use and request section which gives you more information about how to request reproductions or how to come and view the items in person and here are our handy copyright guidelines so as I mentioned before we usually target items that are in the public domain or well outside of copyright just so we know that they are safe to use and safe to digitize um, these individual files reside in databases and servers all within the UM campus. Uh, most of the material is kept on internal shared drives that are connected to UM PCs and backed up on both external hard drives on cloud services like Box, which are paid for and maintained by UM. And that is our digital collections in a nutshell. Thank you for listening to me. And I encourage everyone to come and visit the page whenever you have free time. Thank you.